Advertising revenue is declining, circulation is down, layoffs abound. Times look gloomy for newspapers, but two newspaper owners who once worked for large dailies are carving out successful niches here in New Mexico. Emmy Sprengelmeyer bought the Guadalupe County Communicator in Santa Rosa after his job evaporated, along with the Rocky Mountain News. And Francine Hopper left the Albuquerque Journal to launch the local IQ in 2006. They talked to NMIF correspondent Gwyneth Dolan about why they see a future in print. Fran Hopper and Emmy Springlemeyer, thank you both for being here with us today. Fran, in the middle of a really dismal economy and a very mm -hmm. bleak uh, media landscape uh, and in publishing, you left a, a pretty secure longtime job at the Albuquerque Journal. I did. And you started your own newspaper. Mm -hmm. Are you insane? A little bit, probably, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. You know, I had been at the Journal for 12 years doing the daily newspaper thing and um, really had a big interest in the culture of Albuquerque and wanted to dive into that a little bit more um, and uh, talked about it a little bit and then crosswinds closed is what happened and there was a little hole in the market and we went for it. We decided to go ahead and, and try it and just fill a gap that I thought was kind of missing for my interests that wasn't being covered quite as much. And, and describe what IQ covers for those who haven't sure. picked it up. Sure. It's um, music, film, food, arts, and culture are the five topics that we cover. And um, we, we, yeah, we, we're within those five. So we do a lot of uh, event preview uh, stuff, a lot of profiles on people in the community, um, and just kind of what makes it cool to live in Albuquerque. You know, who might be living next door to you, what might be going on. Emmy, your paper, the Guadalupe County uh, Communicator, you bought. You made a big investment in, or an investment of some unknown size, but big for you, I'm sure. A big investment in an existing paper mm -hmm. in a small town that you were not from, that you would had very little connection to. Uh, this was a pretty big leap for you, wasn't it? It was natural. I mean, I, I had been thinking about it my whole career. I mean, when I was seven years old, I wanted to be a reporter. I knew what I wanted to do with my life, but but about the time I was in high school, I, I saw Milagro Beanfield War, and there's a great character in there, you know, uh, who is a, a one-man band a newspaper, and I, that was always in my mind. And um, so I kind of piddled around working 23, 24 years for other people's newspapers, and then uh, when the Rocky Mountain News closed, and I was in the Washington Bureau, uh, when the Rocky Mountain News closed, I decided uh, it's time for me to actually become a newspaper man. And after all that time, I, I, I feel like I'm finally doing the kind of journalism that's I mean, it's the most exciting, it's the most important, it's the mo most um, frightening uh, to not only be working on the stories, but also watching the bank accounts every week. Um, well, you came from the Washington Bureau of the Rocky Mountain News, as you just mm -hmm. said, um, and now you're covering high school football games? I cover high school football games. I cover uh, illegal dumping. I cover uh, uh, vote irregularity issues. I Crazy cover, hailstorms. I cover all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, I, I have to cover uh, hard news stories. I have to cover feature stories. Yesterday, um, or the last few days, um, I was prowling the county looking at um, all the pinon and, and evergreen trees that are suddenly being um, un suddenly under attack um, in the wake of a major hailstorm we had. Mm -hmm. um, we do uh, our town's been hit. Santa Rosa has been hit by a, was hit by a major storm, um, up to two feet of hail in some places in town uh, on July 3rd, day before the the holiday, and we we now have. 400 structures in town that are damaged. We have a flood of out-of-town contractors and all the issues that that brings uh, with it. Um, so, I, I don't want to interrupt, but you, you have to cover all of these things. How big is your staff now at The Communicator? The full-time staff? Um, Davey Delgado has been, he's the dean of the Guadalupe County Press Corps. Uh, he's been there for, uh, at, at one of the two papers for 30 years, uh, and myself. And Two. we're the only Two. we're the only reporters, um, and I also have uh, ad director Sarah and Naya, and deputy publisher Michael Gallegos. Who, um, um, that's it. And then we bring in um, uh, an ever-changing crew of, of of freelance talent. And I I go out of my way to hire 
hire professional journalists to come in and help me. Um, some really great ones. And uh, a guy that people might know, Jim Belshaw, writes an exclusive column for us. Fran, how many did you start with when you started IQ? How many pe staff how many people? people? Well, to kind of match yours, I mean, full-time people, there's Kevin and I. Uh, you know, I've got my associate uh, publisher, who's my husband. He and I started it together, and, um, and then a couple salespeople, and that's our full-time staff. And we're the same way. We've got a part-time editor, Mike English, who came from uh, Slate Magazine up at MSNBC, and um, a lot of freelancers. And the same thing with you is, you know, we're real strong about getting the folks that have the journalism background and really keeping that integrity in our, our writing and reporting, which is difficult when you get into the business side of it and you've got to also manage making money and getting your stories out. But we started with a pretty small staff and we still only have two full-time administration and then sales. And wow. in the interest of full disclosure, now that I think about it, over the years I've written a few things for you. Have, you. you have, you have. I haven't been become wealthy from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I, I'm interested in asking, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, yeah. but um, wh what I've found is that the investments in, in, in top grade talent pays off. Because as you, um, we, we, we both know ways to get by with low cost or no cost mm -hmm. uh, content. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to make your publication more valuable to right. to its readers and then therefore to the subs to the Correct. advertisers. Correct. So, have you found, like I have, that the more the more resources you put in, you're getting the returns from it from the quality? Oh, sure, definitely. I mean, we're what our what we've been lucky with is that people are really interested in working with us for the exposure and to be a part of the publication and the money. You know, that's not a full time writing gig. We're not going to be a place you're going to come and make your career as a writer with us, but we have people in the community that are specialists in you know, the, the restaurant market or entertainment or the music scene, and having the exposure and being associated with us is a big value. Um, and we've, we're lucky that we've constantly got people that want to work with us. And we're very, very, like I said, that's a big um, number one on our list is that the credibility of that writer is there. And I think the readers see that and they, they believe in what we write, and that's the most important thing for us. Annie, I, you know, we, this is something we've talked about a few times, and, and you gave a speech at a journalism conference in Santa Fe earlier this year, mm -hmm. in which you said the future of print is print. I By agree. which you mean the, the future of the newspaper business is in paper. Printed paper copies. And, I, and, and I'll try to boil it down. Um, what, what the major companies and the small companies fail to realize is that the major the, the most important thing to watch is market penetration. That's, that's where you, you can claim value to your advertisers if you can say X percentage of this captive audience is going to read this publication, they're going to see your ad. When, you sh when, it, when things started shifting toward the internet, you're not saying, oh, well, what percentage of the homes in a small geographic area are going to read your paper? And I can say 100% of mine. Um, suddenly, you're saying, well, we're going to distribute worldwide. So we're going to get uh, 100,000 hits. Well, so what? Half of them are in Idaho or Washington State or Sweden or or California, what value is that to and any? And half of them weren't trying to get to you in the first place. Yeah, the, the penetration, the penetration, the market penetration rate for the internet model is so low compared to what I can offer. I killed my website. And if an advertiser calls me or if I call an advertiser, I can tell them, I can look them right in the eye and say, I don't have a million hits. I have 2,200 readers. And I can tell you what percentage of them are in which zip code. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that that uh, um, you know we have X percentage of our town reading it, and it's pretty darn high. Um, and I can tell you their demographics, and I can tell you that you know I can actually it, it's it's the original micro targeting. Fran, you uh, you guys do have a website, but you don't put all of your content there. We we do put quite a bit. We um we put a lot of the stories that we write up online, and we do we've got a pretty pretty good uh, track record as far as views and I think it's people from out of town and visitors people used to live here mm -hmm. um, we haven't done a lot of original content but we are moving we do have a new product we're going to be launching in the next couple months it's a digital product it's a little different than the standard 
website. But going real quick back to what you were saying about the print reader, you know, that's for us, we boast a lot of just quality readership. It's like, what is the quality mm -hmm. of that client or that reader who's reading that? How much do they connect to what you're writing about? Like on the web, you might get 50,000 people that got a keyword and went through it, but you know your readers are reading it for that content. Your advertisers know they're looking at it. They're in that market. They're, you know, they're more likely to, to be a customer of theirs. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, to I completely agree with that too. But yeah, we're, we do have our website and it does pretty well, I think, because of tourism and people visiting. You know, uh, I was looking at some numbers before we sat down today and I was surprised to find that more than 50% of the regular readers of the New York Times say they read the paper mostly on a computer or mobile device. Mm -hmm. And that's true of almost 50% of regular USA Today readers and Wall Street Journal readers. Mm -hmm. Now. Albuquerque and Santa Rosa are not uh, really good comparisons for the Wall Street Journal readership, mm -hmm. but... But don't discount the lessons that you can get from a small town paper. I, 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 I have people all the time say, yeah, yeah, you're in Santa Rosa, you're 50 miles from a big town, of course you... But there are lessons there, and the lessons there are if you invest in quality and you stay very connected to your community, and you you're hearing everything that's happening in your community, whether it's the size of Albuquerque or New York or the world, or the size of Santa Rosa. Um, and, and, you, and you start tailoring, or tailoring your paper to what they really need to know, whether it's a hard news story, whether it's a sports story, whether it's a, um, a consumer story. If you're, the more connected you are, the, the, the more longevity your publication has. But at the end of the day, I mean, the content we know is what really matters. Mm -hmm. Does the format matter? I mean, can you see a time, Fran, you, when you will just quit print and move completely to digital? Can you see I that? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm a print child, though. I mean, my, you know, as a design director and, and, and a visual journalist, I love the format of print. I love large format of photos. I love being able to take some time with it, carry it with you. Um, I think the online, the 50% of users with those, with a, a daily news or breaking news, people are watching their phones and they're looking for updates and they're getting it that way. And you're competing with CNN or whatever app you happen to have. Something like us, I mean, we'll have a digital presence and part of our new product is gonna be event-based so that you can find those events really quickly. But we think people still believe in sitting down with the paper in the coffee shop. We've had people say, please don't do that. Please don't take the paper away because I want to pick it up and sit with it and hang out and read it. Um, and I think people don't want to be in front of their iPad and their phones morning till midnight if you can help it. You do need to train those younger, I call them the thumb people. I'm really talking about the younger generations that, sure. that, that they don't know what paper is. They're doing this all the time, all the time. You need to distract them with a printed product that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so we do things in our paper that are specifically geared toward, toward exciting the young people. And um, I want to do more. I've talked about this before, but I want to start gearing a, um, well, I'll give away a little secret. In the next six months, we're going to be doing um, some special features that are geared specifically to the college-bound audience mm -hmm. or to the, to the uh, um, mid high school, uh, you know, I'm talking about consumer stories, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about uh, about uh, you know music stories or, or pop culture stories. I'm talking about consumer stories, about education, and about you know, but geared to them, geared specifically. That's to really them. smart. What makes it worth it to put in all this effort? I mean, it, you're not becoming zillionaires, and you're working really hard. Mm -hmm. Why is this worth it? Well, for me, you know, when I left the journal, I honestly thought there's not a chance I could work any harder than what I've been doing here. Like, this has got to be, I'm getting out of here, I'm going to own my own business, it's going to be great. How and, many times I've said that myself? Oh, man, and it's, it is a lot of work and it's a lot of hours, but I think the difference is, is you, for me, I've got the control to, to, it's a constant wanting to make it better. You know, on the weekends, we can take off or we can go in and do those couple things that are going to get us a little bit further ahead or you know, get a goal done that we want to get done, and we're doing it for ourselves, and so we're making our product better. And um, in my position, you know, I'm getting to meet the community more and be more involved. We do a lot of events, we do a lot of outreach, we do a lot of partnerships, and that's really cool because I'm not in an office you know, 12, 15 hours a day trying to make sure that this publication comes out okay. I do that, but I also get to go out and meet and, and really find out what's going on in Albuquerque. And there's just so much cool stuff that it's exciting. But isn't it addictive, though? You, when, you, when you become your own boss, I guess, I hate the term boss, but mm -hmm. when you become your own boss, 
you just, um, I, I, wanna, I, I wonder if it's the same for you. When, you. when you do what I've done and kind of whittle down the hour, it's easier and easier to do. Then you just think, oh, I've got extra time to do more work. To do some other stuff. And that's <laughs> and so what let happens. Me do a separate, yeah. Let me do a separate publication. Let me do a... Another project. Yeah. Another... And, and so you just think of uh, a, new, a new level all the time when it's your own. You don't have to, you don't have to call a, a staff meeting. If you have a great idea, you can right. pretty much execute it. Right. And that's what we end up doing. We come in because we've got stuff to do. We've got an mm -hmm. event we want to run or we've got you know, something we want to get on and it doesn't feel like we have to be there, but we want to be... Emmy and Fran, thank you for talking with us sure, today. Thanks for having right, me. Thank you very much for having me.